again, everybody. This is Mr. Everything. I'm coming at you with another Wargaming in Miniature video. In this video, we're continuing on with our 148 tactic painting. What we're doing is we're painting all of the 148 tactic models uh, on camera so you get to see them. This one I'm painting here is John Kelly. He's the NCO of the game. And I'm painting his uniform green-brown. The 1942 jumpsuit used in D-Day. Alright, I'm getting in there on his knees and yeah, his arms and chest. And if he gets on straps, don't sweat it. So what I did was I primed this guy with a khaki, uh, khaki camouflage from Rustoleum. It's part of their camouflage paint line. And then I painted the flesh. I did a base tone, and then I did a flesh wash, and then I went back over it and highlighted with a mid-tone. Now I did that with all the 148 Tactics models. So all their fleshes are finito. Looking around, making sure I didn't miss anything. All right. So we're going to go ahead and set this John Kelly off to dry. And then uh, we'll move on to the next color. All right, the next color we're doing is the Tamaya Olive Drab. And we're doing that on the helmets. Uh, because it's a very dark green olive and what it also does is a little runny so it'll wind up highlighting the khaki webbing all right moving on to the next color all right the next color is Vallejo's red leather it is for the Cochrane brown jump boots. They're brown, but they're also slightly red. So red leather is actually a really good color for that. Now in painting the boots, you have to understand that the pants are bloused into or tucked in to the top of the boot. So you have to find where the pants end and the boot begins. And again, it's okay to paint the base because you're going to be texturing it later anyway. Okay, so we're going to let those boots sit off to the side and dry, and we'll move on to the next color. All right, now the next color we're going to put on John Kelly is the green knees and elbows. And I'm using Panzer Ace's Field Gray. It's what it's called, but it's not really Field Gray. So their knees and elbows, uh, the uniform didn't come with this padding. What they did was they took some tarps at the airfield, cut them up, and stitched them to their knees and elbows.
they did that themselves. There you go. All right, so we're going to let that green dry a little bit before we move on to the next color. All right, now we're going to use khaki from Model Color to paint all of the ammo pouches, straps, cases, canteen covers, entrenching tool covers. It's all going to be khaki. Not green, not olive drab. khaki now the khaki spray that I used uh, is very similar to the khaki that I'm painting on here it's not exactly the same color but it's pretty close So we're going to set him off to the side and let him dry. All right. And then we'll be back with the next color. All right. Now we're using wood brown to paint Okay. I just ignored this. Alright guys, now on John Kelly, what we're going to do is we're going to paint his carbine wood furniture wood brown. It's a dark brown. It's not light or mahogany or whatever. It's just a dark brown. And he's got a pistol grip that should be brown as well. All right, and then his entrenching tool handle is a wooden handle. All right, and let's set him off to the side and let him dry before we go on to the next color. All right, now on this carbine, we're going to go ahead and paint the metallic parts black. I personally like licorice because it's a flat black. And it's ex it's very dark, um, but I also have to paint the uh, folding stock because that's metal. And of course, the magazine and the top part of the weapon. Okay, the back side of the folding stock. And the 101st patch on his shoulder 
should be black. We're going to leave that and set that down to dry before we move on to the metallics. All right, we're going to take some natural steel and we're going to apply it to the metallic areas, which I've already painted black. leaving some of the black to shine through. Giving it kind of a two-tone effect, but it'll also really make the metal shine. Yep, just like that. And then I'm going to set this off to the side, let it dry for a minute. All right, now John Kelly does have a boot knife and so what we're going to use is the German camo black brown and we're going to paint the sheath and the handle. There we go. We can give him his boot knife. Let it set off to the side. All right, the next step on this model is to apply a light tone quick shade. We're going to apply it to the entire model. And I'm using light tone because I don't want to ruin any of the work we just did. But I do want to bring out the shadows and the highlights and stuff. Mid-tone is actually pretty good. Uh, what do they call it? Strong tone, I'm sorry. It's pretty good. But uh, I didn't feel like strong tone was needed. I'm not going to say all that. All right, we've got the uh, light tone completely covering this model. Uh, I didn't want to ruin or I didn't want to bring it down too far. So I used light tone instead of like a, a mid tone. Let's let it dry and see what it looks like. All right, the next color for John Kelly is actually we're going back to the first color there, green-brown. Uh, after the wash dries, uh, we're going to go ahead and hit the uniform in the raised areas of the uniform, the folds of the fabric, to kind of give them a cleaner, more sun bleached kind of look but also to uh, bring the color back up a little bit from where we had washed it and the wash a lot of times will take the color down to dark so we're trying to just hit the raised areas of the uniform of the sleeves, the collar, this is the cuff, okay. Yeah, so if there's like folds in the fabric, you want to hit the You want to hit the folds, but you don't want to paint down into the cracks of the fold. You want to leave that to the to the wash. Now I like to do pockets because they actually just kind of stand out pretty pretty bold. 
I think I got this guy. Let's see. Let's do a perusal. Might not have hit the bottom of the jacket in the back. And the back of his sleeve. Yeah, I didn't come at it from this angle. Okay. <coughs> That's why you do a double check. All right, we got him. All right, now we're going to let Jack Kelly, or John Kelly, dry before we move on to the next color. All right, now on John Kelly, <clears throat> the next step we're going to do is we're going to use khaki to highlight all of his gear. We've already painted it khaki, but um, the wash brings it down quite a bit. So we're going to bring uh, khaki to bring that those highlights back up again. Uh, we're going to hit his ammo pouches, his canteen, his entrenching tool. Now on the entrenching tool, you notice I hit the left and right. Then I hit this center raised area. And then the top flap. There it is. Any pouches that are dominant like bottom flap top flap that's how I'll do those canteen cover left and right okay I can't get to the right because the weapon so then we just go and do the cover itself okay now on his pack we go between the back straps along the bottom up the sides not going all the way to the over flap we do the sides then the top center between the straps each side and then remember to just do the raised areas of the pack. All right, he's good to go. We're going to set him off to the side and let him dry. All right, now the next color we're going to do is we're actually going to edge the base. And what we're going to use is U.S. Army Green. Uh, now, if you've got an army that you're painting, I recommend uh, edging your entire army with the same color. Uh, it basically gives a cohesion or a... Uh, a uniform look across your entire army whether the uniform colors are different or not it doesn't matter uh, but the base color kind of just gives it that extra uniform look now we're not just painting the outer edge we're also painting a little bit of the top uh, edge just to make sure that the corner where the the sharp corner there is actually green as well um, all right, that guy's good. We're going to set him off to the side, and we'll be right back with the next step. All right, guys, we're moving on to texturing the base. Now, uh, it's a multi-step process. Uh, what I'm going to do is I put glue in my palette. Then I'm using my tester's synthetic brush to brush glue onto the base. And that way I have more control over where the glue goes and how much glue I'm putting on the base. Okay. 
I want to see like a white film all over the base so I know there will be good adherence with my texture. It looks like we got it all over. So now what I do is I take a couple of stones from here and just drop them on. Just to make sure I have a few stones on there before I go to my ultra fine talus. Okay, and then I'll let that sit in the box there for a minute. Uh, it will take probably about 30 minutes for that layer to dry and then we'll move on to the next layer. All right, the next step on this guy is to take some Elmer's glue. What we're going to be doing is applying some Battlefield Grass Green from Army Painter. Uh, but we're going to apply some Elmer's glue using our brush on top of the stone ballast that we had already put on there. But we're going to pat it down gently. We're not brushing it on, if that makes sense. And we're going to put it in a pattern, like a camouflage pattern, like a woodland camouflage pattern or something like that, that covers about two-thirds of the base. That's the plan. Now, if you've got rocks like this that I do, don't put this on top of the rocks, let the rock shine through. So put the grass around the rocks. Pattern looks like it's got a pretty good coverage. Maybe a little more right there in the front. We're going to sprinkle. Now, when we sprinkle the flock, we make sure we cover the entire base. Uh, we don't just try to hit the glue, we try to hit the entire base. Because when we go to shake it off, anything that's not touching the glue is going to come off with the, the shake. All right, so we're going to set that and we're going to get let that dry for 30 minutes or so and then we'll be right back. This is John Kelly, the NCO. Alright guys, this is my 7 148 Tactic Americans. Uh, tell me what you thought about the painting of each individual one and uh, come back and check out when I do the Germans. I'm going to do the Germans individually as well. Alright, and I'll see you in the next one.